Yeah. Good afternoon, people. It is the good pan. Uh, it is uh, Howard Linton and Ben Hunt. I'm doing a rare post panic with friends, uh, different than trends with friends. Uh, I wanted to call my friend Ben Hunt, who lives on the upper other side of the country, um, and very different than me, but yeah, very the same. We've had I probably had him on the most. And I was going to say made some mistakes in my life. I'm, I'm writing a post about fraud right now. <clears throat> and I've had a few fraudsters on my panic show. You know, the first one was, um, I had Sam Bankman on uh, way early now, like before he had moved to the United States, when he was still, for whatever reason. Is that right? Well, yeah, he was in Hong Kong still. There was no, there was no FTX oh US. God. You'll love wow. listening to it because it was a fascinating conversation. I, I, I I'd love welcome. to listen to it. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, so I want to talk about But Ben Hunt is here. Ben is uh, the founder of Epsilon Theory. He's uh, an entrepreneur, uh, investor, um, human, uh, um, great sense of humor, uh, fantastic writer. And I, uh, he is a swashbuckler in that he sets trends, even though he doesn't look at them. I don't see him. If you look at Ben once up, just like you would look at me once up, you go, ah, just a regular guy. But he is a trendsetter. And I think all your kids have been homeschooled and doing great in the real world. That's right. And um, that is a major trend going on. So welcome, Ben. Thank you, Howard. It's good to be back. Um, yeah, you were on my uh, podcast. So I said I had a few uh, one-time fraudsters on my show, and I think I, I was going to say that I don't, you know, you beat yourself up when that happened. But the point is, I never had him on twice for three times. <laughs> so, like I, right. I, I can't undo what I've done. But it wasn't like I got to have that guy back on. It was more like okay, and you yep. and Jim O'Shaughnessy and Jeff. Richard, the people I've had on five, six times on my show over the years. Um, that's what I take pride in. Like everybody makes mistakes and they want to beat people up. It's the people that constantly make them. I'm proud that I don't just constantly triple down on my mistakes. Right. So um, let's, you pick a topic. You want to ask me questions too. This how to stay sane. You know, October 7th, yep. I can't undo it. Um, yep. It's changed my life as a father, with, as an investor, as a friend as a community person, as a Jew, and I don't know, I'm probably mixing up the order. Um, mm -hmm. So those are the things that, it, but I'm Jewish, right? and I and I was just in Israel, so it's going to affect me differently. I have friends in Israel, so I'm biased. Yeah. Um, but but so much... Howard, that's, that's exactly what I want to ask you about, because, um, so I'm not Jewish, right? Um, and I'm having a really hard time processing what's happening in our country, United yeah. States of America, right. in the aftermath More of More importantly, really, in America, yeah. Uh, and what I'm really having a hard time with is, because I'm, I'm shook, you know, as the kids would yeah. say, about the, <laughs> the naked anti-semitism and even that word anti-semitism is is i'm increasingly feeling it's like it's too it's been used too much to express the horror of what i'm yeah. seeing yeah. Uh, but i'm not experiencing directly like you are mm -hmm. um and so that's what i'm i'm, I'm having so i'll 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 talk to a, a jewish friend and I'll say, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe what's happening, right? That 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 this naked Jew hate was, you know, always there underneath the surface. And now you kind of ripped off the kind of pleasant skin, the fiction to reveal it, particularly on, I'll say, this kind of horseshoe theory of the world. It's particularly you see it on the right. The far right, and you absolutely now see it on the on the left and the far yeah. left, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm I'm so freaked out. And almost uniformly, Howard, and this is what I want to ask you about: the reaction from my Jewish friends has been what I call the Jewish shrug, which is, well, what did you expect, right? And and I I didn't expect this, right, because I don't have that. 
I don't even know what to call it, that knowledge that this was always there. Yeah, and so I, I, let me yeah. let me phrase this question one more in just one more. Mm -hmm. Let me add one thing because I mm -hmm. I was talking to another non-Jewish friend of mine about this, and here's here's what he wrote because I wrote it down because this is exactly how how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. It's hard watching this happen. As someone who has close friends who are Jewish, I feel like there's so little I can do to help them, and I'm relegated to spectating while they have to endure the most grotesque <clears throat> things in the world. It hurts in a way that I don't know how to explain. But it's the kind of pain that lingers while simultaneously making me feel guilty because, of course, it's not me who's going through this. So what right do I have to be wounded by it? It's almost like a stolen valor type of thing. And that that's what I'm wrestling with, Howard, and I don't, I just... No, that's that's such a good feeling, because I have it there, and I'll, I'll dive into my thoughts. So first of all, I have that feeling, because I'm not Israeli. Right. So, so I'm digitally doing my thing for the community, Right. First of all, I believe I would, you know, me, I have strong opinions loosely held, but if I look at the last 20 years of my life, I'm like, here's what I believe. Trump was a criminal. If you if you really go through themes on my blog, it wasn't about right versus left. Trump's a criminal. QQQ over spy. You know, how simple my life was. Um, and by Apple. And what else? Like, if you really think of my blog, you go, where does he talk about the most over the last 10 years? QQQ. Apple, uh, you know, and uh, Zerp, like make money because they were handing away money. Right. And you're right. Oh, and and so what am I guilty of? Well, I'm guilty while I was looking over here, but I didn't see the left because they were calling it woke. Yep. I didn't associate, I don't even know what woke meant because I mean, I was so worried about what was happening over here that I thought by them labeling people as woke, I dismissed them. Even though I'm kind of progressive, I just Me didn't too. realize how big woke was because I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't even know who to put. Instead of calling people on the left crazy, just like people on the right are crazy, and then you could you could equivalence it. I was just like, what the fuck cares about the woke? They're they're crazy. Like Chappelle has them over managed over here, and we need to focus on what's over here. So even I feel terrible as as a, as an American Jew, born Canadian Jew. But I can't. I don't have fake valor because the Israelis have to now have three jobs. They got to run their kids from school. Like that COVID never ended. It, you know, they can't work because they're reading the news. If they're not fighting, or they got to go fight. Yeah, or flee. I think twenty percent of the Israeli population were kids that have served. And like for safety, if they lived in Tel Aviv, they're they're basically useless to the economy. They left. Right now, that's been filled up with American Jews that go over there. Go over there, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now, now, I don't think Israel suffered from a people perspective. So I have that state dollar too. So you know, we appreciate, like I said, people just saying hello. Right. Like the hardest thing for me to do is to be on Twitter right now because I quit yep. like a couple of weeks before, but I, I came back because I'm like, that's people ask me like, we need your voice. Yep. And. I don't feel great about being the, the, the guy just yelling all day, what it must seem like, of just what's obvious to me, much like Q2Q over Spire being long apple. This feels as obvious to me. Okay? Yep. What makes me feel bad is the equivalency and the moral Because, yes, innocent people are dying. Like, I don't know how to justify my stance if that's your reaction to it. Right. Right. And then the hardest part for me as a Jew is I don't like Ben Shapiro. I don't right. like right. Uh, right. Josh, whatever that guy, Holly. I don't Holly, like. Yeah. No, nope. um, nope. I don't like Bill Ackman. I don't like Dan Lowe. Right. There's certain Jews I don't. I don't like Sam Bankman. I don't like yep. Soros. I don't like I don't know what, whatever his name is. Or got killed by uh, all the politicians from jail. White man, the island guy. The other Jewish guy. I don't like yeah. Bernie Madoff. Either. So as a Jew, our biggest worry, at least an American Jew's biggest worry, is how will they think about Madoff? Fuck us. He didn't fuck. When when Madoff got fired, Bankman got fired. I was like, he fucked me as a Jew. 
-hmm. right? Because I'm now going to get associated. We have yep. that extra guilt because he was Jewish and a criminal, right? A Jewish first instinct when... Which is crazy, how because I... Th this I'm is just what I, you're asking me how I don't share that kind of experience, right? When, yeah, when, you can't you know... share that experience. And I'm in a group chat or WhatsApp with Bill Ackman cheering him on, and like, and, and as soon as it's over, I'm like, fuck that guy. Because we don't agree on 99% of the other thing, but we have this we have this higher complex, very complex. My therapist would take complex thinking, you would understand this, where it's not complex. It's yeah. like there are moments in time where something is so obvious, and if we could focus on this one percent problem right now, which affects America, London, which is there is a certain group of people that happen to be Hamas, whatever you're going to call them, terrorists. They were pigeonholed. They've shown themselves. They are willing to film the massacres, call their parents, eat a meal in front of the dead body, and then call their parents and get praise. So we, I think if we can't agree that that is, that there's a small percentage of people that, that have done that, and we're willing to do that. And we have them cornered and the innocent lives will die. We're fucked. Yeah. If we can't try, if we can't get around, and that's that complex thinking that I'm going to, and, and hopefully in two years I won't look stupid on this this complex thinking. And I've just I've yeah. said, listen, if we can't agree that we got to do it, and this is where Israel is at, there's a line with Israel. I'm like, for all their flaws, for as much as Netanyahu is a dick, for right. as much as some of these Israeli settlers have been stupid and dangerous yep. and pushed the boundaries. I wouldn't live next to the fence. I don't know. I feel like I'm not that crazy. Um, but it's still a higher problem going on, right? That no matter what these people were, once they got over the fence, what they were willing to do was not related to anything in England. So, so I think Jews can rally around that one thing. Yep. Uh, am I shocked? The most, the thing I'm shocked about is the, it's like a zombie economy of hate. Um, they're not, they have no feeling. They stand there with a camera, no fear of being punched. So what's right. shocking to me and my wife is It's like, the easiness of it, right? It's just, it's They're just like the... saying, get out of my space. Like they're asking you to punch them. And in the 1960s in the Vietnam, they would have been fucking tear gas by the military, like the, on their own home soil yeah. at college. The cops would have beat the shit out of these people. Right. And now they're just, these kids are just bitching and moaning with the mask on. And so I don't understand that. Yeah. Because I, I've got, let, so let me add some perspective on that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've, I've been thinking a lot about exactly that, Howard. And I, so, you know, a bit about me. So, so before I got into this insane, you know, the, cartoon world of investing in markets, right? I was a political science professor of all oxymorons, right? And, um, you know, I had tenure. My thing was um, war, you know, international security, to use the, you know, the $10 phrase. Um, so, you know, I wrote articles and books about war. And so, I mean, I... I know a lot about the conflicts, the wars in the Middle East, specifically around Israel, right? And what I would what I would say is that of all the significant conflicts that Israel has fought, right? We'll we'll start with with forty eight. We'll skip Suez for reasons I'm about to describe. It's an interesting one in hindsight. Right, right. Or 67, 67, 73 for sure. Mm -hmm. But those were three, what we would call in political science, total wars, yeah. right? Where it is an existential war. It is, it's, it is, <laughs> you know, there's another side that is fighting a total war. Mm -hmm. And in total war, which is existential, uh, there are no rules. 
right? And it, so, so, uh, or or rather, whatever rules and principles you might have take such a backseat to you have to win this war by destroying the other yeah. side without like quarter without versus destroy. nuclear bomb uh, 100 bombing, bombing dresden versus that that's it that's it so yeah. so world war ii was the last total war that the united states was in so whether it's the firebombing of tokyo dresden cologne whether it's the second nuke on nagasaki you know these are all things that you say huh shit guys i don't know right yeah. uh, but but this is what total war leads to israel hasn't thought so suez contrast this is lebanon 80 82 those were not total wars and and so the world has not experienced a total war israel has not experienced a total war since for for, for 50 years yeah. right so I, it seems clear to me that that is the decision, the choice, the correct choice, I think, by the Israeli government, that this is a total war. Certainly Hamas treats this as a total war. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, right. So, yeah. but, but the, the meaning of that has been so not just watered down, it's been perverted, right, through our, in the U.S., you know, drone wars and wars at distance and, and wars of choice. The United States has fought a ton of wars of choice. Yeah. And so the beliefs are, well, this is just another choice. And it's not, right? It's it, it, an, an existential fight is not a war of choice. It's, it's a war of necessity. And I think that's clearly the path that Israel is on. Yeah. Uh, and I get it. And I also think that the the rest of the world, particularly the United States, you know, is incapable of getting it. We're not going to get it. And because we're not going to get it, I really see this creating an enormous schism in the in the Democratic Party. Enormous. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like if Biden runs this perfectly, as, you know, as, a, as someone who's thinking Jewish, I'm like, Israel's got to fight this war and hate me for it. But like, I'm not a war expert. I didn't plan on being one on October 20th or today, November 3rd. I wasn't yeah. in my plan. I right. Was, I was still like, Maybe Zerk will come back one day. That was in my plan. That was in my plan. Like, should I get, should I go to the mall or should I just do Amazon? That was my choice. And by the way, it wasn't just here. It was like, I was in Tel Aviv a month ago. Yep. It wasn't like, and so someone said, man, it was just so normal back then. I said, no, it wasn't normal. It was the end of an era. Meaning yep. it was, it was, it was so silly. Yeah. It wasn't normal. You know what's normal now? Or you know what's going to be normal three years from now if the war is over and the Tel Aviv will be full of, yep. of people with guns again. Or, you know, so what yep. I witnessed in Tel Aviv was not normal. Right? It looked like what you were looking at, meaning it was the end. Thank God I went. It was like Hong Kong it's... the day before China came in. Yep. It was like the Tel Aviv I saw and got to share with the world and joke about Wagyu, um, shawarma, and fun on the beach and yep. that was also it's over. it's over people don't understand that like that yeah so you're mad at israel well, guess what they understand what they gave up now too it's over and if, so they're fighting for their they went from like a bubble because they were in a bubble yep the tech whatever i don't know venture capital you know doing business with abu dhabi almost you know doing business with saudi arabia like guns were down they were guns down. Okay, they were so guns down they needed Netanyahu for the last five years in Israel. People don't right. Get God that. help us. Right. I mean, yes, exactly. If they were. You yeah. couldn't get. They had four hundred thousand people a week in the tech sector in Tel Aviv marching against Netanyahu. Americans can't get four hundred thousand people together in one place without taking over the capital. 
Nope. Right? So they have peaceful. And Israel is flawed. So is America. But they're the best. They're the last. To get 400,000 people in Israel, that's the equivalent of. Oh. Uh, 10 million? 30 million, 30 yeah. million yeah. people yeah, gathered 30 million here. Yeah. For, for an event. So people don't understand how important democracy is to Israel and how fragile it is right now. To the point where not only was was I living in a bubble when I was at the beach in Tel Aviv sharing photos from Camp Pensky, Israel was in a bubble. They believed they could rid themselves of Netanyahu. And Netanyahu, much like Trump, is in the Republican and maybe the party left, think that they're entitled, they're tricking, they're trying to beat down democracy internally. And here comes this, whatever we're going to call this group again, I, there's so many names for them. I just call them terrorists and crazy. Yep. Um, we don't value life. Uh, are everywhere. There, you don't have to worry about them coming in from Canada, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver have so many, uh, you know, Trudeau. We have to now look at Trudeau and go, I think he's a terrorist at, at some level because he's just clueless. And, and but, but, but how would, so this... we have all these other problems that we're going to have to yeah. deal with. And we can't even agree that Hamas is bad. At the but this level. is this is but 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 Howard, this is exactly you're making exactly a point. It's the end of I'm yeah. going to say a 50 year period. You know, it's not it's not just a and and, and look, it's, we've also seen this that there are a number of things that have come to an end, right? So and so an end to the facade that wars of choice and you know, drones and that that all this is the way of the world. That's that's over now. It is to your point back to, you know, put it in Tel Aviv terms, like what Tel Aviv was in the 70s, where yeah. it was guns up, man. <laughs> it was guns up all the time. Yeah. Tel Aviv, and, I just can't tell you, I was talking about what's the best city in the world. That that view, great food, nightlight, uh, great airport. Uh, you could go to Abu Dhabi. You could be in Europe in three. You could be in Europe in three hours. Right, cosmopolitan, English speaking, right. stable. English -speaking. I mean, and there's a very, Over. very like rainbow, rainbow, yeah. right? I, I mean, it was the New York of uh, the rest of the world, with with what? better weather and the beach. And that's over. And over. I, and I think of the other things that have ended. Right. So the, the a world where inflation does not exist, that's over, man. Over. That's over. This this weird world of you mentioned, you know, ZERP of the price of money being zero. That's over. We we've had an ending here. And and there are so many institutions and practices in our political and social lives that are now their their world is over, but they don't know it yet. It is that chicken with his head cut off still running around playing things as 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 normal. And I, I gotta tell you, Howard, our political parties are one of them. I mean, the Republican Party is has been just broken for you know five years now. What I'm trying to say is the Democratic Party is now broken. Yeah, there's a schism here that you can just drive a truck through. Well, they lost Michigan. I mean, Michigan. So, and and I don't know that that's. I mean, listen. To well, me. they could lose Michigan, and that just... oh, oh no no no. I think they've lost Michigan. And and yeah. the 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 concern for me because I'm afraid. Look, I mean, if I was in Michigan, I would vote right. So, all elections today are turnout elections. When you've got yeah. polarized camps, it's not like you're going to get one person to switch from your party to the other party. What it is, is you have to turn out the vote of your party. And what we've just seen is that the vote turnout on the Democratic side just went, just collapsed in the states where they need a heavy turnout, like Michigan, like, was, you know, we haven't, People haven't started talking about Wisconsin and Minnesota yet. Arizona, Arizona, going to go far away. Like I'm, I obviously I hope we get it. I hope we don't lose our minds here. But like but, but, Phoenix but, but feels safe. Like why would right, we vote blue? Howard, you look at the battleground state. I mean, this is an election that, in any event, was going to be decided by fifty thousand people nationwide. If if Michigan flips red, well, Arizona's and, in the What's that? 
Arizona will flip red, but that's Arizona good. flips red. Leave leave Arizona aside for a second. All right, because I was looking at this just on the on the math. So Michigan flips red. Wisconsin and Minnesota are base are purple toss-up states. Let's say they go red. That's it. It doesn't matter what happens in Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Georgia, right? Biden can run the table on those four states. It doesn't matter. That's 270, Howard. Yeah. If that upper but in any normal world, world, he wouldn't be president. He was he was voted in because it was a vote against Trump. Like you know, people. It's so funny that for ten years I was called a libtard right. Right. on stock tips for doing my job, kicking crazies off stock tips, man. sacrificing growth, saying, "Hey guys, you fucking idiot! We have house rules. Go to Twitter. Go to Reddit." Yeah. So we sacrificed growth, and what did that cost me? People would call me Hitler. People would call me a libtard. And my huge mistake was I thought it was funny that, you know, so I'm saying I would yes. look at Phil, I would look at Phil and I go, oh my God, these people. I didn't associate how dangerous it was that people would call me. They were so freely using the word Hitler with me. With because you. Because I kicked them off stuff. So right. They would email me and go, how? and then they would email the next day, Howard, sorry, I called me Hitler. I need to get back on stock clips. And we would hang these emails at our office because it was just, and Twitter never did that. Twitter was like, we need more Hitlers. Right. You know? And so, on the left and on the right. Like, right, 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 Dorsey right, was right. one way, Musk is the other. They're neither yeah. good, right? Because no one allowed. What happened, and I look at Twitch, stock tweets and Twitter is one thing. I take the heat, but guess what? I don't take, no one asks me what the crazes are like on stock tweets after 18 years. You know what? They're not that bad. You know why? Because you get kicked off. Because you get kicked off. Before you get riled up and become a nation, we kick you off. People go, what would I, well, if Kramer came over to Starkfoot's, I go, Kramer wouldn't last a day on Starkfoot's because he would get booed out of there. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't last and you'd have to go back to Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Elon wouldn't last a day on Starkfoot's because I would kick him off saying he's going to overtake the site. And at the risk of like growth, this is my site. And, or my, you know, the site that's, you know, we built, not you. And yep. um, it's not about whether I agree with his views. I think our, our, our we, we will be polluted forever if I let this person on our site. So at the risk of growth, we've always said, here, this is our community. Guess what we learned? Communities are not good venture capital investments for that. Exactly. Community. Exactly. Okay. Right. Like, that's right. As soon as you let your guard down, here's what a community looks like. As soon as someone breaks through the fence, as they did in Gaza, the open air prison, whatever we're going to call it, because I'll give them the open air prison. It was, there was a fence. Okay, but if that's an open air prison, it's going to be better than the prison that Sam Bankman uh, is going. You know what I mean? Or the I, opportunity. I, so, listen, Howard, do we have the same experience earlier yeah. this week? Um, on our little community, right? So we have a, you know, subscribers only because I, I'm trying to keep up, you know, offense is both to keep people out is also to keep you. So I'm trying to keep out, and we charge money because I because I don't. If 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 something is free, you know, it attracts the trolls and the. Well, it's worthless if it's free, right? At, so, at the end, yeah. eventually it's worthless. It's eventually it's worthless. worthless. So we've kept this this fence up, and I thought, okay, I was confident overly confident, stupidly confident that the madness of the outside world wouldn't find a way to seep in. And so I would like three days without moderating or checking, you know, the threads and stuff. And sure enough, somebody comes in and says, well, how many Gazan children have to die before it balances your scales? Huh? What's, what's enough for you? And it's, it's like, oh my God, dude. And so, you know, kick him off and said, just shut. But we're just not the right community for it. We're, exactly. But it's like, it's like a sickness. It's a disease. And, and you think you can build up the walls to keep it out. And it yeah. finds a way always of seeping in. And I, yeah. I really feel like our entire country now is overrun like by this. Where, you know, talking about words, I, I mean, this word genocide, right? Which yeah. has a real, you know, a real meaning. And it's just like, People throw it. It's like, do you even do you even hear yourself? And the answer, of course, is no, because it's just so easy and cheap. There, there, there are no stakes I play for 
yeah. doing this this awful shit, this mindless stuff. And I didn't. Yeah. Anyway. No, so I said I went from being Hitler or a libtard. Now, I never, I never knew what a libtard was because I'm definitely not <laughs> one. Um, and, oh, yeah, or being called woke. And I still, so when someone, I dismiss those words because they're so ridiculous that I shouldn't have, right? That's my mistake. I should have understood what they meant because now they're playing out in today's world where some kid with a mask could tear down a poster on the street, meaning they wouldn't tear down a poster of a missing dog right. three weeks ago. Right. They wouldn't have gone around the city looking, hey, I lost my dog, even though if it was a dog from another state. No one would have cared. Right. Meanwhile, this 1% issue has offended so many people. That scares me. Now, again, I think it will pass. Because I think America, well, I think this part of it will pass and we'll go to okay. some other level, right? So okay. so let me give you an example we did in Phoenix. So um, a couple of the community leaders here said, hey, we're going to go spend, we'll raise 150 grand, we'll buy all the billboards in Phoenix. Let's go raise some money and we'll we'll put our posters on a digital billboard around the city. You know, right? Good luck tearing those down. So right. you, go, you go low, we went digital high. We had to go spend a hundred. That money could have gone. This is what the libtards or whatever we're going to call them, LG for Palestine, we really see. This how this how wasteful there. They made our community go spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And again, it's good use. The wealthy we can afford to do it, and we did it for more than just the reading of explaining. Sure, sure, sure. But yeah. it is. Yeah. That money could have gone to so many other things. So I, this is why this is a one percent issue. If we can't agree that this type of person can be rid, and you can't rid them all, but we got a lot of them cornered, and now they've shown us who they are. And Israel, like you said, has no choice. This isn't like uh, this isn't like let's go to Afghanistan because, uh, or let's go to Qatar because. Right. This is like fuck. It. Israel's in. It. What Biden did that was right was send the ships. But, but you least... know, Howard, the, the reason I don't think this goes away is that it, does, that it doesn't go away here in the United States, is that there is an ability now for the strategic adversaries of the United States, so China and Russia, to keep fanning these flames. And so, yes. as you know, as you know, like we track, well, we track everything. I mean, we 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 track all English language media oh, every night, yeah, yeah. right? And we run it through our, you know, NLP engines and the like to see how the the stories, the narrative arcs are are progressing. Mm -hmm. And you know, Howard on a, on a prior. Um, Panic with friends. We talked about this with the banking crisis here in the United States last yeah. March, where I think I mentioned to you there was clear evidence from what we're tracking that a lot of the story that your money is not safe, the dollar debasement, the dollar's oh, yeah. going away, the bank is not safe. So much of that. So much of that narrative within social media, you can see the way it is pushed and egged on by the same words, the same phrasing that you see in, you know, Genoa and, you know, Russia Today. I, I mean, it's the same language that gets used by like the, the Jackson Hinkles of the world, you, you know, the, you know, just the worst people in the world take this 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 stuff on so you know recently there was you know baidu maps yeah, they, they removed were, uh, israel from the map they removed israel from the map you know that that israel does not exist right it's so, a little thing but they they got their message across so they're pretty evil to do that no no exactly right exactly right it is it's it's in and of itself tinkering right? it's it's tinkering terrorism digital mental terror it is a thousand little snowballs that, yeah. that that you start at the top of the hill in hopes that one of them rolls down to create an avalanche it's this constant yeah. 
ding, 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 on yeah. information and resources and the words like genocide, right? Like, you know, that, that Israel doesn't exist. You know, there's a constant, a constant rise. And, and look, I'm not sure. I understand that the United States does that as best they can in Russian media or tries to, would try to do that in China or try to do that in Iran. The difference is our media system is a hundred times more open, a thousand times more open. And so the ability for state actors to really wage war in narrative space. Yeah, you're right in this. If people aren't following you right now, it is happening. Yeah. I'm telling you, I agree with you happening. on that. I'm just the optimistic asshole that will always remember Tel Aviv as it was. I'm also the guy who I also militant right now, I'm militant, digital militant, is that if you lose Israel, like this is how stupid people are. If we lose Israel, then only accept, like there's only so long without America, Israel could last. Like, come on, yeah. Whoever's ring I got a kiss, bring it in front of me. Like, I'm that confident that if America tips here, you know, I'll be fine. I won't feel good about it, but I'll be fine for a little while. But I ain't going, there's nowhere to go. There's a Jew. You can't go to Canada. Right. I mean, I could, but I'm going to face persecution a bunch. Like, like this, the, the big cities there are anti Semitic hellholes you know, on the verge of it. Um, Toronto, which was a haven for Jewish people, is already just a watch. Um, in anti Semitism, Montreal the same, probably Vancouver. Um, so as a, as a Jew, thank God I have Israel. Like that wasn't on my roadmap, right? Right, 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 right. right. New Zealand, yeah. go to New Zealand. I don't, what do I got in New Zealand? I gotta go to Israel. So, of course, I'm going to be siding with Bill Ackman and George Soros today and Josh Hawley and people I didn't, right. Did. Terrorism brings strange, strange bedmates, is, is what I would say. And for those kids that are like feeling guilty about watching Fox, uh, don't be shamed because on 1% complex issues, even the idiots, even the biggest purveyors of filth can get something right if it's so obvious. And I think it's kind of like the news media that cried wolf, you know, the enemy of yep. my enemy is my friend. Fox is the same as voice. Now, again, I'm biased, right? Because I understand what I believe. I want there to be a Tel Aviv, even though I know it'll never be what it was in September of 2023. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I luckily so I, saw I, it I actually wrote this down, Howard. I, I love this phrase that you remember, you're an optimist because you remember Tel Aviv as it was. I love that. I just, I just wrote that, that I got there. I've got it. Yeah. I would enjoying the views and the shawarma and the freedom of walking and the lack of gun. And so we went to a period in Israel where it took six hours. Sure. Like you could not imagine hearing that it would take the Israeli military six. If someone had told you that this could happen, you would have said no. Yep. So what is it going to, what's it going to be when they come for you in the United States? quietly to a village or a town. That's like Coronado being wiped out in an evening, right where I live, right? Now I'm lucky, I live in Phoenix in a guard-gated neighborhood and I live in Coronado, which is the Navy SEAL. So we're either first to go or last to go from a nuclear you know, weapon, I say. <laughs> but I have Israel to go to. That's right, so you're circling back on to what you said at the beginning. I'm very lucky. I don't want to brag about it, but like I have friends in Israel and they will take me in. They would take you in too, by the way. I'm just saying. Well, that's very nice of you. No, they would. Like, that's how Israel feels towards America, right? Forgetting the far right and the far left, the way Israel feels towards America. So when you ask me what it feels like, Israelis feel worse about this. Even though they go out and fight, they come back and read American media, and they're like, what the fuck? Right. They're saying what the fuck. They're saying what the fuck. They're calling me feeling bad for me. Because they're saying, like, we thought we could always, like, that. their world's shaking, that's too, because... Yeah, it's fascinating that because really those poor people are more worried about what's happening here because they know they need America. And they need Can an I... America that's like, so I think Biden and Kamala or whoever, or whoever is running this place needs to take one for the team for the better of the world, lose the election, but take out the far left while they do it. 
And that's probably our best hope is the Biden challenges these squad or whatever these women are called with monster. Uh, and they seem to enjoy being monsters, right? Much like the fire, much like the Congress, the GOP enjoyed being monsters just for the sake of shouting and being mean. Uh, this far left of summer, which is taking a severe satisfaction, smug, like yeah, smug. I, like, I, you I can't tell you, catch me smug. I, I tell you what, it, um, it's just clear despicable. To me that, I don't know how to phrase yeah. it. These are despicable people. They're not woke. They're well, not uh, libtards. Uh, they're despicable. Yeah, but I, I got to tell you, Howard. I mean, what seems really clear to me is that they're they're not going to confront them directly, or at least that's not the the strategy yeah. right now. So so. And the, the reason I say that is, so I don't know if you caught this, but, you know, it was announced by uh, our vice president that the the White House was launching a new national strategy to combat Islamophobia. Did you see this? Did you see? Uh, all right. It must have uh, just happened. Yeah, it well, it's like, it's like two days. I'll, anyway, I'll send you my tweets about it but but here's here's my tweet so that's what they have to do to win michigan well then they're done exactly yeah that's it exactly so so knowing what i know about how these programs these national strategies are set up yeah. what they've done is they've earmarked out of some program pick a number 20 million dollars right i'm what i'm telling you right now is that 90 percent of that 20 million dollars is going to wayne county that's yeah. Detroit, mm -hmm. and they are going to ask <clears throat> Ilhan, they're going to ask Tlaib, they're going to ask CARE, C-A-I-R, the, the big pack. We're going to say, can you, can you think of, can you help us spend this money? Can you guide us on how this $20 million is going to be spent? Yeah. And so they're trying to buy them off, right? But, but that's where we are, Howard. And, so they're done. and it's not going to, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I mean, A, you're right about these bits. So can these guys get bought out, bought off? Kind of, but they're, they're the political, and I, I shouldn't even say this, but I'll call them the political equivalent of terrorists, right? Where they'll take all your money, yeah. but they won't spend it on, you know, no, hospitals. And they'll, they'll, they'll spend it on tunnels and rockets. Yeah. Right? And, but this is where the administration's going. They're they're in the can we buy them off stage. And from what I'm seeing and kind of how the different positions have hardened and was it it that you, you can't buy these people off. You can't buy them off. And so can Nikki Haley sneak in or no? Impossible. I think it's really tough, and I'll tell you why, because the the Republican Party, and this was you know, whatever else you want to say about Trump, he's no idiot, right? I, I'm with you. I mean, he's, yeah. I thought, he, I, I mean, for God's sake, I, I mean, back in the day, I, I, I mean, I remember looking at the Trump organization's, you know, prospectus for some some bond issuance they're doing in Atlantic City. And I, you know, this is where I'm running a fund. I took a meeting. Oh, early 2000s. Yeah. Right. Th these guys were just, they weren't just criminals, right? They were just, they were like, Dumbass criminals, just dumbass criminals. But I don't think that that Trump. I think he's canny <clears throat> enough, right? So, so what they've done since they they started making these changes uh, when he was a well after twenty sixteen, they started making these changes in the uh, Republican primary rules. So it used to be in the Republican primaries that it was a pretty proportional uh, representation thing. So if you got, you know, 15% of the vote, you would get 15% of the delegates. And Trump actually used this to great effect in 2016 because he would get in every, you know, he would just accrete delegates and he was finally able to get over the top. They've changed the rules now from proportional to the, the whoever gets the most votes gets most or all of the delegates. So let's say Trump, you know, the the Nikki and DeSantis and all these, they they split the rest of it. So long as Trump has a plurality in these states, he's going to get all the delegates. So he's the so candidate. I, 
right? So as a candidate, sorry. So I, I they've they've changed the rules structurally to favor a front runner, even so long as you've got you know five different so people splitting the vote. He could win in the landslide. Yeah, he could right. win the nomination, and I, I think he wins. No, the but nomination. he would win the general in the landslide because he would get the he would get the Jewish I, money vote. I I think he can. I think. Look, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but if That's I'm a betting saying, man right, right now, I, I I I think Trump, I think Trump wins, and I can't believe I'm saying it because I, I think it's allowed to say it because I wouldn't have if someone had said Howard Tel Aviv as you that's the last great picture you'll see from this place. So it's a black off. So you know, what do I know? The uh, but yeah, if that's the game the Democrats are are are, are going with, they're going to lose, and if they win, I lose either way. So. I'm going to be rooting against that strategy. They've turned like an easy vote into like a hard path. Um, That's really interesting, fun. Howard. Yeah, like you said, the world has just changed now. It is good. Yeah. October 2nd, it sent up into a bazillion other trends. Most of them would be global. So certain trends are already started. Um, you know, a substitute for the dollar. Not not that the dollar is going away, but a substitute for oh, we'll wrap it up. A substitute for the dollar. Like whether we like Bitcoin or not, Bitcoin's here. To stay as some kind of substitute for some people or as some derivative of that uh, inflation and higher prices are here to stay um higher rates are here to stay not longer for longer just here to stay right you know there's no chance to go to a low interest rate that's right. environment that's right. there's nothing to juice because there's no global economy and, and this howard's maybe the most important part right point right which these what we're describing is not something that's mean reverting Right. You don't go back to Tel Aviv as it was, right, to, to your point. You know, maybe 50 years from now, you get back there, but there is a, this is a great phrase from the the Chinese guy who wrote The Three-Body Problem, that science fiction trilogy. He described it as the Great Ravine. It's just a period of, of, of history where you just got to get from here to there, but it's like a ravine. And we're in yeah, telling that to my kids. I'm like, you didn't, you got unlucky. You got, co I didn't see it coming. You got COVID and this. These are real. You know, exactly. as, as I said to my kids, like, at least you don't have to put a gun in your hand yet. And, um, but I said, you know, they want me to tell them it's going to be all right. And I've been telling my kids, I'm glad you feel this way. You know, my son called me. He's kind of like, I feel like everybody's looking at me. You know, and he's a little bit tipsy and, and he was just upset. You know, for a 23, yeah. 24 year old, she's never been upset about anything in his life. So I said, you know what? I said, I'm, you know, I'm proud of you. Like, this is how you're supposed to feel. You know, if I saw you at a at a at a rally that said uh, from the river to the to the sea, think about how I feel. So are you the fact that you're upset? Unfortunately, is a good feel. Yep. For you, and as a dad, thank God you feel this way. Because that's a normal feeling, and that's who we're fighting against. People who don't have that feeling, and they didn't know it's as big as it was, and they didn't know it was as good as a, you know, not a great dad, but it makes you feel better as a dad. And I think those are the little things that are going to matter for the next twenty years, not how much money you made or how big your stack was, or how big your podcast was or how big your followers were or how many likes you got or how many things you have if this wasn't a wake-up call to like redo your network and make sure the people you've had 10 times on your podcast there are people you have 20 times on your podcast you know what i mean like it's like I know exactly weird, what you mean howard and that world. that is the message so, to go that is the message for this for this podcast right because that that is going those are the little things that ain't so little, my friend. No, they're big. Right? They're everything. And, and so we're all going to recognize that what in the next few like? years. I didn't think it was to be my home. And now it's like the third place on my list. This next place on my list. And even my wife is like, yeah. You know? Other than, like, get a gun. So, you know, the world has changed. The, uh, all right, you're the man. I'll let you go. Uh, we, we'll do these more often. I mean, we didn't get to the other six subjects. We didn't even get to the other good stuff. So, uh, cool. yeah, we'll do it again anytime, Howard. Okay, buddy. Cheers. Thanks, brother. Bye-bye. I'm going to start recording.